we're gonna do it anyway. So uh, quickly, my name is Brian McClure. I work for Mayhack. Um, Amy Parker is a coworker of mine who was also talking. Uh, I live in Yancey County. Um, we work on what's called the Rural Health Initiative, and all the time people are asking Amy and I, what the heck is Mayhack? Um, so Mayhack stands for the Mountain Area Health Education Center. We have two logos to um, confuse everyone. But Mayhack overall trains the next generation of healthcare professionals through multiple programs. So we go in a lot of different directions, doing a lot of different things. Um, we also have a partnership with UNC Health Sciences. That's where our other logo comes from to offer graduate graduate programs in medicine, pharmacy, and public health. And then, of course, our students, residents, and providers provide care throughout Western North Carolina at multiple locations. So we do a lot of pipeline programming, and this is what Amy and I work the most on. Um, pretty much what it is is K-12 through education. We try to get students like you all on a pipeline into a healthcare field in hopes that you will come back to practice in one of our parts of rural Western North Carolina. So we usually, we basically only work with seventh and eighth graders and then ninth through 12th. Um, we don't really go down into the, the kindergarten through eighth grade. But there's also residency programs at Mayhek on the left and then fellowship programs on the right. And then the all of this is brought to you by what we call Project Promise, which stands for providing rural opportunities in medicine through inspiring service and education. So the reason we're telling you all of this is because we want you all to learn something new, um, give you some experiences to beef up your resume, of course, meet new people, and then have some fun for free. So the meet new people thing is all virtual. We used to do all of this in live and in person. So Amy and I would travel around to high schools in Western North Carolina and do these workshops as a hands-on opportunity. So we would bring a lot of classes, different classes together to do these different basic suturing, pig dissections and so forth. Um, but overall, we want you to connect with Mayhack because we can help you um, throughout your journey on through high school into undergraduate and then graduate and medical school. You can follow us on social media for our latest and greatest happenings, uh, WNC Promise, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're starting a YouTube page and are working on a TikTok. We've been slacking, but we got it in the pipeline. Amy, did you want to introduce yourself? I'll just say hello. I'm Amy and I live in Cherokee. Um, so. My region is from Haywood County West. Welcome everybody. So we found this really good video. We're going to show you all while we're waiting on our panel of people to get here. I think Amy has a PowerPoint too. This guy is pretty famous. Um, Will Kelly, he's a nurse practitioner. I don't know if anybody's seen him on YouTube. Let me know if you can hear this or not. Difference between a nurse practitioner and a physician assistant lies. It's in the welcome back to health and wellness. I'm Will, nurse practitioner, and today we're going to be looking at the differences between a nurse practitioner and a physician assistant. Now, if you want to know the difference between a nurse practitioner and a doctor, I did a completely different video on that, so be sure to check that out in the link below. But in this video, I want to walk you through and compare the differences between an NP and a PA in terms of their education and training, their job role, their collaboration differences, as well as their salary. So stay tuned. Clear. So both nurse practitioners and physician assistants are considered advanced practice providers or APPs. So first, let's look at their undergraduate education. A PA will obtain their bachelor degree in whatever they want, so long as they complete the prerequisites for PA school. A nurse practitioner, on the other hand, has to complete a bachelor's of science in nursing. Both of these will take about four years to complete, but there are some accelerated programs specifically for PAs, which can help them complete this portion of their education in as little as three years. 
During this part of their education, PAs won't be required to complete any formal clinical hours, but they will be required to complete between 1 and 4,000 hours of direct patient healthcare experience in order to get into their PA program. This is usually experienced being an EMT, a paramedic, a patient care tech, a CNA, a medical scribe, all of the above. At the same time, nurse practitioners will be required to complete between 800 and 1,000 hours of formal clinical in the hospital learning to be a bedside nurse. Once they reach graduation, PA should have already applied to and been admitted to a PA program, and they'll move directly into that, whereas nurse practitioners will have to pass their NCLEX RN board certification exam to become a registered nurse. Almost all of them will immediately begin working as a registered nurse at the bedside. There are some RNs that go right into their NP program without any experience, but this is not the norm. Now we're going to jump into the specific master's programs of both a PA and an NP. PAs will complete a master's degree in physician assistant studies, health science, or medical science. NPs, on the other hand, will complete a master's of science in nursing. While all PAs are trained as generalists, NPs have to pick a specific program for a specific patient population. Most PA programs will take about two full-time years of study or 24 months. The first year, they'll go through didactic material covering in-depth medical sciences. Think of this like the first two years of med school crammed into one year. Then the last half of the program will be clinical rotations in pediatrics, OBGYN, family practice, emergency medicine, and general surgery, totaling about 2,000 hours of formal clinical experience. Nurse practitioner programs are structured differently, and most have full-time, part-time, and even online options. The first two to three semesters of an NP program usually don't have any clinicals, but you'll be solely learning didactic information. Then you'll start your clinicals, but at the same time, you'll also still be learning didactic information. So you do both at the same time. And where you do your clinicals is going to depend on your your specific specialty. By the end of their program, nurse practitioners will complete on average about 600 to 800 hours of formal clinical experience. Once they graduate, in order to be certified, PAs have to pass the PANS, the Physician Assistant National Certifying Examination, and NPs will have to pass their board certification as well, either through the ANCC or the AANP. Both PAs and NPs will then be able to apply for state licensure and then be able to practice as an advanced practice provider once they're credentialed. When looking at the job role differences, there really isn't any. Both PAs and NPs obtain health histories, perform physical assessments, order and interpret diagnostics, prescribe treatments such as medications and therapies, perform minor bedside procedures, and consult appropriate specialists. They both work in almost every specialty, including primary care, specialty offices, inpatient hospitalists or in the ICU, within the emergency department, home health, surgery, etc. The only real difference with surgery is that PAs more often help with the actual surgery, so they'll be scrubbing in. NPs can become a first assist in the surgeries and scrub in, but that's much less common. More likely, if an NP works for a surgical service, they'll be doing the admissions and discharges for them. And now let's talk about physician collaboration and supervision. Both NPs and PAs will work in close collaboration with physicians but this is where the main difference lies between the two. Nurse practitioners have full practice authority in 23 states and counting. This gives them the legal authority to practice all of the aspects of their job role under their specific license under the Board of Nursing. This means that there is no required supervision or collaboration with a physician. But just because an NP might live in an FPA state, that doesn't mean that they're not going to be consulting or collaborating with physicians appropriately when needed. It just gives them the legal authority not to have a required collaborating physician. So if they don't live in an FPA state, they will have to have a collaborative agreement with a physician. It usually involves occasional chart reviews, and the NP has to have some type of access to the physician if they have any questions. This is usually through secure text messages or phone calls, and this doesn't require an on-site physician. PAs, on the other hand, are required to work under the direction and supervision of a physician or a group of physicians. However, state-level laws will influence the degree of supervision that is required. So what does all this mean? This doesn't mean that the physician is looking over their shoulder, looking at every single thing they're doing. Usually it just involves a PA talking with their supervising physician about a complicated case or maybe management of a specific disease process, co-signatures of prescriptions, as well as the physician signing off on their charts. But this is going to look different in every state. And in most states, the physician doesn't even need to be present at the specific location. So as a general rule, the NP route will offer more autonomy than the PA route. 
This specifically comes in handy if you plan on opening your own practice one day, especially if you live in an FPA state. But both PAs and NPs are great careers and an important part of the healthcare team, and both are very competent to take care of their patients within their specific scope of practices. And now let's talk about the salary differences between an NP and a PA. So in general, facilities are going to pay the same for a PA or an NP because they're both doing the same work. When looking at national data, NPs make on average $117,000 a year, whereas PAs make $107,000 a year. But remember that this is national data. The fact that some NPs have more autonomy to open up their own practice and increase their revenue, and so the national data will be skewed upwards. But in general, from what I've seen and what I believe to be the standard, hospitals, facilities, practices are going to pay PAs and NPs pretty much the same. Now, if you want to know how much I make as an NP, I made a video on that. And if you want to know the differences between an NP and a physician, check out that video as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now get out there and save some lives. If you're trying to lose belly fat, He, um, it was very informative, but he talks really fast and some of the terminology you may, might not be familiar with. So if you have any questions about the video, feel free to ask Brian and I will do our best to, um, try to answer. I'm not an expert, but I can definitely, um, is Amanda in? I see Amanda on the call. Just double checking if. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. It took me awesome. a little more button pushing than Zoom. I'll start my video. Sorry about that. Okay, awesome. Welcome to the call. Hi. Um, did you get to see any of the video? I did. It yeah. was when I got on there. It's it's very informative, but it's very he talks very fast, and some of the terminology may be a little um, more technical for the students. So I was just asking them if they had any questions about the video. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I have a really, really quick um, PowerPoint. It's just very short that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, here. Let's go back into it, just one second. Um, and then we will turn it over to Amanda for, for Q&A, okay? So, see if I can share the correct one now. Hmm, okay, let me go back out one more time. Sorry, guys. It's only wanting me to share this one. Um, can everybody see my screen? Okay. I just thought that maybe what you guys want to know is what this means for you. Um, because in basic terms, and in North Carolina, I'm going to go back to this first screen, as you start to consider what you want to do after your um, undergraduate de degree, your four-year degree, you need to think about um, the things that are relevant to you, such as where you're going to school, um, how close it is to home for you, um, how much it costs, and these things. So, and, and if you want to chime in anytime, feel free. You're definitely um, the expert here. So, um, the first thing I wanted you to know is that what undergraduate degree you must have to apply um, to, to get into a school to be a nurse practitioner. And to do that, you have to have your BSN, a four-year degree, your Bachelor's of Nursing. Um, you can have any bachelor's degree to apply to become a PA. Where can I go to school? So in North Carolina, these are just North Carolina schools. These are the choices that you have for a nurse practitioner or a PA. Um, Western Carolina is not on there, and we have, we have Western. Am I right? Probably because it's new. 
Okay, so they just added it. So Western Carolina has a nurse practitioner program now. Um, and I don't know why I didn't think of that before. And that's actually where you go to school, right, Amanda? Okay, so um, that should that needs to be added to the um, slide. Okay. Um, those are your choices, basically, except for uh, WCU as a nurse practitioner. And then as a PA, you have 11 options in the state of North Carolina. And East Tennessee State, which is just across the, the line from North, Western North Carolina, also offers the nurse practitioner course. That's right. And their prices are actually very competitive. A lot of times out-of-state schools are crazy compared to what you would pay in-state. But East Tennessee, um, I think, has a broader reach right now because they're trying to get students. So what can I expect to pay to, to attend these programs? Uh, based on what I saw in North Carolina, the entire program can be twenty-five dollars to $45,000 for a nurse practitioner based school, the range is broad. Um, the average for a PA is about $50,000. It was about fifty five dollars for UNC Chapel Hill. Um, the program can take two to three years if you're a nurse practitioner and it's a two-year program to become a PA. And that is it. So we're going to turn it over to Amanda and she can make whatever comments she wants to. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, so I thought I'd ask, is everybody here in high school, like looking to, okay. Yeah. Is anybody interested in nursing? You're interested in nursing? So that's kind of a good place to start um, because to be a nurse practitioner, you really gonna have to start by being a nurse in, in some ways you might be a CNA first and then LPN and then BSN and then go into it. And it just really depends on your pathway. Some of you might already be a cert certified nurse assistant and, um, all that gives you more experience. So these programs to do a nurse practitioner, you just have so much flexibility. And especially if you do start out from high school, I didn't start nursing until I was in my thirties. So I always look back and say, wow, if I could have done it then, because you have the opportunity to work nights, you have the opportunity to work many days in a row that you might not have if you, once you start a family and have children. So it's definitely, if you already know you're interested in nursing, it's really good to look into those programs right now, especially here in North Carolina and Asheville area. There's that RIBN, I think it is the ribbon program. And so that puts you on a pathway where you're earning your BSN, but you can already practice as an RN in that third year, I believe, because you've already earned your RN and then you are earning your BSN while you're already practicing if you wanted to. And it goes through AB Tech, I believe. And I believe also then once you finish that two year portion, you would be working through Western in that program. So Western is definitely a good program to look at. Um, as far as PA, now, if you have any medical experience and you already have a um, bachelor's with the prereqs met, then you can go into the PA pathway without having, you know, a, another medical degree, but you'd want to look at what their prereqs are. Does anybody have any specific questions? Yes. As an NP, what would you, what role would you play in the emergency room? In the emergency room, you would kind of diagnose just like another provider would. Um, I saw NPs working in the emergency room in a smaller um, emergency in a smaller hospital that I did some rotations at. So I didn't have enough experience in an emergency room to see day to day, but I know they have physician's assistants and I know they have NPs and you kind of just work as you would as if you were a, a physician. And then you obviously have the resources of your colleagues if you had a more compl um, complicated case or, or if an emergency or code came in, it's going to be all hands on deck. So you're not going to be left alone, but you're going to have a lot of responsibility, just like a provider would. You're going to assess, you're going to diagnose, and you're going to treat and write orders. Does that answer your question? Okay. And, and guys, one thing to add that's um, kind of noteworthy, if you're going to go into the PA program, I have a couple of friends who are PAs. 
versus an NP, um, you have to have around 250 hours is usually the minimum requirement of um, shadowing. And a lot of times people will get to the point where they have finished their undergrad degree and then want to apply to a PA school and then say, oh crap, I didn't know I needed these shadowing hours. So if you could get those now, you would be kind of ahead of the game. Um, a lot of those and every school is kind of different, but out of those 250, they'll usually require at least 50 to 75 of those to be direct patient care. Um, so that's something to kind of be thinking about now. Maybe you went through school and you've got your CNAs that you received in high school. Um, so you could count those shadowing hours towards that. So it, it always pays to kind of plan ahead. Yes, I know some of the requirements from Wingate for a PA because I actually wanted to do a PA program before I did nurse practitioner program. However, I had done a lot of the prereqs years before because I went to school for a, a lengthy period of time. And um, Wingate's one of the schools where they have a five year cutoff no, no bending the rules about it. So, you know, I would have had to take so many courses over, but their prereq period is within the last five years. And I think they might've even had 500 hours of shadowing, um, medical, um, and the thing that was really the sticking point for me, you want to look at their prereqs was I needed another biochem class. And so I decided at that point, I was like, oh, well, I don't want to wait till the next, you know, application cycle to be considered. So you want to look and plan those things ahead when you're in your bachelor's, when you're completing your four-year degree. So could you share with us your, um, your path to get where you're at now? So I was originally just a biology major. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I did a lot of different research things, traveling abroad, and I was probably about 37 when I went to East Tennessee, I went there for my bachelor's because it was a second degree program and I already had a bachelor's degree and I already had all the prereqs. In the very end of my bachelor's degree, I decided I want to do nursing or something like that. I was at UNCA and so I started taking more of my courses in the health and wellness major. And so that gave me a pathway to learn a lot more. I got to take some community based programs and internships that made me a little more competitive to nursing school. So if you're doing your bachelor's degree and you want to go to nursing school, you don't just want to think about the prereqs. You want to think about if I'm applying for a competitive school, what kinds of experiences are going to make me competitive? You know, if you have time in the summer to do any kind of work, even if it's just shadowing or working in like care partners. I did internships there. You just got to take advantage of any internship that you can pretty much in any field, not just nursing. If you guys aren't interested in nursing or PA, because they're going to look at a lot of aspects for your application. And if you might have a weak point, you may not have a high GPA or you may have had a bad semester. You have all these other chances to make yourself stand out. Um, and that was the difference too, between Western Carolina and East Tennessee for me. Western Carolina was very competitive and um, East Tennessee did a different scoring. Like they weighted your test scores for the T's and other things where I could be more competitive. So you can look at schools, not just for cost um, and location, but you can look at what are their requirements? How can I fit in? So then I did do the nursing secondary program at East Tennessee. I ended up working for two years on a progressive care step down pulmonary unit. And I applied to Western Carolina then for the nurse practitioner program, which I'm currently finishing. Did that answer? I, I skip around a lot when I was talking. So I may have missed something that you were wanting me to answer. No, I think that's great. How long do you have left? I just had, I'm supposed to be done at the end of the summer. We had a little bit of a dance because of COVID. At one point we were out of clinicals. Um, and so they had to modify the program. And of course the school recognized that and was really good working with us. And, but last semester we did do a lot of hours. We did, usually we're doing 120 clinical hours where last semester I did over 240 to make up for what we lost. So I should graduate at the end of the summer. And will you have any sort of residency 
um, are there any requirements right now for a nurse practitioner as far as residency goes? I don't think there's any requirements necessarily. There might be individual requirements for a prospective employer. So for me, I have a family. I'm pretty rooted here in Asheville. I'm 42. I can't really say I just really want to work in this pediatric office and move anywhere to work. So right. I don't know what I'll do as far as a residency. Right now, I'm in a FNP cohort doing my hours through Mayhec, which I love Mayhec. I don't think they have a residency at this point for nurse practitioners. They do, I believe, have residency for RNs. So if you went to school um, to do Grace, if you did that, Mayhec is excellent to look for to do a residency there for RN as far as I know. I was just going to make the point that it, I, I know it can be difficult if the residency is required. Um, I, I knew someone in the program at Western who was driving, I think, to Shelby or somewhere to do some sort of um, residency program. And so that's one thing that you do. You would want to think about when applying for school or thinking about where you want to go to school, how close you are to where you want to be um, if you have to do a residency. It makes it difficult. That is a good point in considering the school choice because some schools that cost more, they place you in your clinical hours that you're required to graduate or even hold your license and they might cost 30,000 or 40,000 more. They do that for you. And a lot of the schools that cost less, East Tennessee, Western Carolina, we had to find our own clinical placement, which can be a big task. Um, they do have a resource to help us. I know all of my, you know, classmates, none of them didn't find one. Mm -hmm. and so that's something, And but some of the students have to drive farther for it. There were some students that were coming from two or three hours away anyways for the class days. So right. you may be able to do the majority of the class, you know, distance learning, which is a benefit. We only had one class day a week. And in the end, we were online for that class day anyway, due to COVID. But the finding the clinical hours could be one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, yeah. and I think that was the, you know, what we wanted to um, show with this workshop is, is all the things that you need to consider when you're basing, you know, your, when you're making your choices for your career. Um, just like you said, sometimes you thought you were going to do an NP. I mean, a, a PA, and then you changed your mind based on what worked out best for you. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of things that you guys would need to consider when you think about applying for, especially after your undergrad, um, so that you're on the right path and you don't waste a lot of time and money. Shepard's raised his hand. Go ahead, Shepard. You got a question? Yeah, um, I have two questions. My first question was about shadow. Um, I've been interested in doing that for a little while now, but I couldn't really find any ways to start doing that. A lot of people online just said that it's a really hard thing to do and most only college students get it. So do you have any suggestions about how? I'm really not sure what's available now with COVID and maybe another obstacle. I believe at one point I did see stuff like if you go on the hospital websites, you might see something through mission. I felt like I saw at one point some sort of shadowing or, you know, if you want to volunteer, you want to shadow and they had categories for college or for high school students. And that may be more limited now because of COVID, but I think it's worth to look on different websites. Um, if you have any kind of bridge programs between your high school and you know um, college, I don't know what grade you're in, maybe there's summer programs that they offer. If you ask any of your school counselors, depending on what year you're in, is there anything I can do in the summer? Do you guys have any connections? And then, and then when you're in college, there's always different classes. If you look into the health and wellness, you know, we had different classes that were community-based, you know, working with different populations in the community. And you just kind of have to get yourself looking on the websites, look at the um, Council on Aging here in town. You know, there's always some place that might need something and you can kind of shadow slash volunteer. And it could be just a challenge with COVID, what they can, you know, who can they allow in? I can add to that a little bit. Um, so 
a part of our rural health initiative was to start some internship programs that allowed students to do shadowing. Um, with that being said, during COVID, it's nearly impossible to get a high school student in anywhere. Um, but you can always um, keep our contact information handy. Hopefully, we're going to get through this pandemic eventually and go back to somewhat normal lives again. Um, we have did internships that are kind of one off where you would come two to three days um, for maybe one week and shadow with providers at Mayhek on the Asheville campus. Um, so we could possibly offer that. And then we have some, uh, we did offer a summer camp that was in person. And a part of our summer camp was a couple of days where you would shadow with kind of a wide variety of healthcare professionals throughout the Mayhek campus, um, which were really great experiences and kind of let you see a little bit about how each field is different. Yes, Grace. I see Grace. Do you, uh, is there a place where we can find that kind of information for maybe the summers, um, like coming up after COVID is a little slowed down that we can find more information about the summer camp and stuff like that? Yeah, I'll put the link to our website um, in the chat. But the best place to probably stay up to date with what's happening would be to follow us on one of our social media accounts, whether it's Instagram or Twitter. We try to post new things on there. So, like, if we were to have the summer camp this summer, we will put it on social media with a link for you to apply. Um, and also, by registering for this workshop, we're going to pull your email that you registered with out and send that as we open up these various programs, hopefully. Grace, are you, have you done a CNA program or have you considered that? I haven't. You may want to look, I don't know how old you are, what their age requirements are in, um, but mission, you know, it might be an easier way to get into shadowing or doing something. Um, and also at the same time, get in education and be placed to work in some sort of capacity and get those hours because mm -hmm. they need, if they still need CNAs, they're going to have to let you in. Yeah. yeah. What kind of time frame would that be? Like what, what, like days of the week, weekends, summer, stuff like that? For the CNA programs, as far as I saw years ago, it was kind of condensed and you did a lot within a shorter period of time. Um, and then as far as working, you might only be working one or two days a week, depending on your schedule. Um, but as far as the education component, I'm not sure what their requirements are. And it's sometimes they'll pay for it for you. I know that I wasn't able to, because at that time I had a child, she was eight months old. So the only way I could get into nursing was a second degree program because I could not go in as a CNA first, but. There were people that graduated with me that had previous experience as a CNA and they got into the floors there. They wanted to work a lot quicker because whereas we all technically didn't have experience, they had more experience in the hospital. They had worked with patients. So if I was able to, I would. I'll also say sometimes your high school will pay for that for you. Um, if they can, if they have certain programming, they, um, they'll pay for you to get your CNA while you're in school. And those, those credit hours help, um, they just are a step up if you're, especially if you're going to go into nursing. Brian has put the link for our website in the chat. Just letting you know. So if you would like to um, grab that, you can. Do we have any more questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, you mentioned residency earlier, and I kind of got lost when you started talking about that. Is that something that's required for PA? Amanda was saying it's not right now. It's not required for PAs or MPs in the state of North Carolina right now. Um, but some, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Amanda, employers will ask you to to do residency with them. It's possible. You know, I'm not quite sure. I haven't looked into a lot of the opportunities here as far as requirements or what they might have. Some of them, you know, they do where you can look. I think Vanderbilt has residency programs. 
where it's hooked in with your education and your pathway. Because of like, if you went to NP school, you can choose, I'm doing an MSN program, you might do a BSN, which is your bachelor's bridge to DNP. So you would be lumping it in, in a period of time. There's just a lot of different programs and I don't really know of any residencies around here. So I'm not very good with knowledge on that. I've kind of got myself in my bubble that, you know, I want to do nursing, but I have to look at what's available in Asheville to me. So I don't know too much about residency programs. I'll look. Um, you know, the student feels more comfortable having done a residency program before they get started in their career. It's just another step in between when you graduate and when you actually start to do your job on your own. It's kind of like you're, you've got somebody there to um, guide you, you know, for another year or whatever, just to, you know, um, give you a, a sense of security before you go out on your own. So that's all a residency is really. They kind of have it at mission for the, the registered nurses. If you want to work and you're a new registered nurse, they have you apply to the program and they place you and they have a certain structure on how many weeks you spend. And so it's a more controlled training. So yeah, basically an extra step and resource. Any more questions? Any more questions? <laughs> I have one last one. What made you decide to go not just like the RN way, but more of the NP? What made you decide that? Well, I was an RN. I still am an RN. I'm a registered. That's my license that I still hold and keep. Um, and in fact, actually, we skipped over that. There are some programs, NP programs, that want you to be an RN and work in the hospital for one year or two years before you're allowed to apply to their program. So I really didn't know if I'd do an FNP program at the time. I just, you know, that's what I went, just did my BSN. And then I worked for a period of time in when we decided it was time for me to go to FNP school. That's when I applied and I had roughly two years experience at that point. But if I had more time, I would do more because you find that you'll excel at, you know, I went and worked on a pulmonary floor, but if I was a nurse RN for a while longer, I might work on a cardiac floor and you just have so much more experience to pull into um, practice. So you have to look at all that. But you will have to work, you will probably have to work on the floor before you become an FNP or go to the program. I think six months was the least I saw. I had a, a colleague, she graduated nursing school and had her BSN and she worked on the floor with us for six months and she got accepted by Vanderbilt to go into their BSN to DNP program. So she worked as a nurse for six months and went straight in to this really nice NICU, you know, neonatal FNP program that was awesome. And it seems like, and and I, I may not be right because it, you know, everybody has a different story, but it seems like for the most part, the people that end up going for their nurse practitioner have gone down the nursing path and it's just an easier route for them, you know, rather than detouring back around to become a PA. So, yeah, um, it doesn't make sense once you do that because you would be going to school for a PA I don't remember how long the program is. It just wouldn't really make much sense once you are an RN. I did have a classmate that he did do that because he liked the way the program was taught and what you do as a PA better for what he was gonna do. He wanted to do more procedural stuff in with um, cardiac procedures and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it made more sense to him. So the PA kind of can do a lot more procedural stuff and you get a lot more specialized training. They might actually do a week or two weeks program in each specific practice. Whereas in nurse practitioner, you're kind of lumping it together by adult, older adult, women's health, and not by 
PA is kind of taught more like medical school when they do it. Um, yeah. It's, it can be more specialized for sure. I have a friend that's a PA that works in a sports medicine clinic and she assists in surgeries, you know, which is probably not something a nurse practitioner would do frequently. Not unless you'd have to go back and get another certificate or specialized training, which is what he wanted to avoid. So that's why he yeah. went the PA route. Right. But Any if I wanted to do that, I was, you know, past my five years. So <laughs> right, right, right. It wouldn't make sense. And that's really, you know, the whole point of this workshop. We, um, we, we try to make you know, information available because, um, you know, a lot of these kids are first generation students. So not sure, you know, they're these are most predominantly rural students, um, and so you know, these are just things to take into consideration even when you're choosing your undergrad. It makes a huge difference if your parents didn't go to school. My parents, I think, my mom went and took a couple college courses, but my father and my mother, neither of them went to college and earned a degree. So it makes a difference when you're guiding your child through high school of, you know, if you're going to take your SATs or your ACTs and all those things, my parents did not know about. So I did not go to high college right after high school. I didn't go to college for years later. I moved out on my own. And so I took a much longer pathway and maybe because of that. So it is really good. There's a resource for you guys here because it, it just, there is a pathway to college that not everybody knows about. All right, guys, we want to be um, considerate of your time, but if there's any more questions, we will be happy to take them. And if you have to think of later, you know, uh, Brian and I aren't the experts here. Amanda is, but we can definitely forward questions to her yeah. or, you know, to someone else. If, if you have a question about a PA, you know, we, we have resources that we can reach out to on your behalf. So feel free. Yeah, I'm not an expert, but I definitely can ask some of the other students and stuff. You know, a lot of them, that's their goal to do a residency. So they may know. So if there's any things like that, I can ask around and I'll actually get back to you, Amy, if I find anything out about um, nurse practitioner residencies. But right now, you work on your RN residency. <laughs> that's it. Any more questions? Brian, do you have anything? I don't think so. Thank you, Amanda, very much for well, thank you. taking the time to talk. Yeah, we appreciate it very much. We've got a poll that we usually put up, and then I have a certificate of completion that I will share with you guys if you need it for your teachers. But we do really appreciate your time, Amanda. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, there's no problem at all. Thank you. You can go ahead and put the certificate up. The poll is locked up for some reason. I don't know all what's right. going on. I uh, will share the certificate then. Jennifer asks, is there any meetings after this week? Yes. So next week we are having a workshop on Tuesday called Health Careers Explore. Um, it's pretty cool. It's um, done by a Mayhem. But the health careers. Are